Hello there, YouTube. Devin here again. And uh, today I have a special video that's kind of answering a question that I get asked all the time. So a lot of you know, as you've been following my channel, I have a fuck ton of helmets. Um, and fuck ton is a literal term of measurement. I have a fuck ton of helmets. I probably have between... Com well, complete helmets, probably close to 100 incomplete helmets and helmet parts that I could throw together, probably somewhere in the range of 400. Um, so what we have here is a Finnish M40, which is a copy of the German M40 helmet. Probably one of the most iconic helmets in the world because it's a Stahlhelm. All right, or what a lot of collectors call a Nazi helmet, which is wrong. So, but what we have here is a question I get asked all the time. People are always asking me, well, if the, if the Stahlhelms were so good, why didn't they just make Kevlar versions of them? And I you oftentimes shake my head and look at these people... Like, they're some of the dumbest people on the planet because, like, everyone in military stuff, whatever, claims to be an expert on everything. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that. They always claim to be an expert. Like, well, this and this and that and that. And a lot of times, you know, they come up with these outrageous stories that somebody doesn't necessarily know. But it turns out to be something really, really stupid as to why it's, you know, why something is the way it is. Well, the Stahlhelm was designed off of medieval design um, from the 15th century uh, in 1916 the modern Stahlhelm came out and it was just a pretty good design for that era um, it did kind of dampen your hearing it did kind of obscure your sight it did um, have some other problems as far as going prone the helmet tended to rock forward onto your head um, so it's not really the best design, but for the limited knowledge and resources they had, for the first part of the 20th century, it was pretty good. Okay, we'll say that. It was pretty good, um, but what it comes down to is what was the best, air quotes, helmet, really comes down to your situation, your environment, and everything like that. Like, there's a lot of better helmet designs out this than there. That were in use at the same time, like the Swedish M30, M33 helmet. That was arguably a much better helmet because it went on to be tested against one of these by Finland in the 50s and found out that that one is actually better, lighter, cheaper, and pretty much in every regard better. So, but um, the Stahlhelm is actually overall a fairly good design because you can see features of this design carried on into today's helmets. So now back to that original question that I posted to you is like, well if the M40 was so if the Stahlhelm was so good, why didn't they make Kevlar versions of it? Well, I'm gonna argue that they did. Um pretty much everyone has used one as well. Pretty much every single country has used one. Um a design that is basically a Kevlar version of this. And we're gonna take a look at that. So we're gonna slide this over here. Alright, so you can still see it. Now we're going to take a look at probably the biggest uh, anti-Nazi uh, country's first Kevlar helmet, the Paz Gap. So once again, here, we'll get this, and we'll let you take a look at the profile again. Notice how there's this big skirt there, and there's this bill, and it's got this kind of oval-shaped crown. Okay. Take a, Just take a good look at that. Okay, and then we'll move that out of the way. And now, take a look at this. Oh my gosh, they're so similar, right? There's still that kind of skirt that comes down. It's not flared out, though. There's these kind of um, ear pieces. There's this bill. It's got that same kind of ovular crown. It's almost like it's an exact copy with just a few changes. Like the fact that it doesn't flare in the back because that's unnecessary. And there's a little swoop that comes up here. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. 
um, there isn't a whole lot of change, and this has been fielded by almost every westernized country, or a similar design to this. So, pretty much every country in the Middle East now uses the PASGAT as a standard. Um, a lot of European countries use the PASGAT as a standard, a lot of the smaller ones anyways. Russia even has uh, their police forces use a PASGAT, China uses a PASGAT. Um, but we're going to take a look at a slightly more improved design on, on, on this that pretty much everyone else uses. Um, and that's the Schuberth, which is actually a German helmet. Now, once again, we're going to put that over here. We're going to take a look at the Stahlhelm here again. Yeah, so, once again, get the profile in there. There's that ovular crown again. See it? All right. There's the, the skirt, you know. The bill, all that jazz. All right, now let's take a look at the shoe berth. Pretty much the same thing again. It's got the skirt, it's got the bill, right? It's got that nice kind of ovular crown shape. So ear flares, all that good stuff that you associate with the Stahlhelm that made the Stahlhelm a good design. And then you could see that carried on today. So when somebody, t asks me, well, why didn't the Stel why didn't they just make a Kevlar Stellhelm? Pretty much every country did. This is Germany's first Kevlar helmet. This is America's first Kevlar helmet. It's all subject to what you see. And to be honest, the Germans just got the design right the first time. And because it does do an excellent amount of coverage. And this design wouldn't entirely start being phased out for better designs and stuff like that once they realized you didn't need this much coverage. Maybe being able to hear is a little bit better um, in the modern battlefield and all this other stuff because, you know, the, the battlefield has changed. This helmet was a very good design for its battlefields, which would be World War One and World War Two, which is there's a lot of artillery and explosions and, you know, static movement and... Um, stuff like that. A lot of, you know, still large-scale war. This is a very good design for large-scale war. It offers a lot of coverage and stuff like that. But on today's modern battlefield, where there isn't really large-scale wars going on, it's little skirmishes here and there, it's not the best design. You need to be able to hear more. A little bit less coverage is better, actually, um, as far as communications and stuff go. Um, it's just... This design, though, was so heavily influential. And I hope this kind of clears up some confusion and stuff like that, because I'm tired of getting asked that question. How come they didn't make a Kevlar Stahlhelm? Well, pretty much everyone did. So, but like this design in steel designs, where they realized this is a bit much from the original 1916, and they cut it down into this. They took those original Kevlar ones, like the Pazgat and the Schuberth, and they cut them down into ACHs, because they realized it's a bit unnecessary to have that much. And it's following the same exact design trend. Now, a lot of people say history repeats itself, and I'm a firm believer in that. Those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. And this is one of those instances. Um, do I think this is necessarily a bad thing? You say doomed, as in, like, bad, but, you know, sometimes doom just means you're going to. So, that's one of the definitions of it. So, not necessarily a bad loop of history, but still a loop of history. So, hopefully you guys like this video, and you uh, like this sort of thing. I have a lot more videos like this uh, on my channel if you're new. Um, we're over 600 subscribers, though, so thank you all for that so much. Um, I am super excited to say that. I never expected this channel to get this big, um, and I'm very, very glad it has. Uh, I'd love to put out more videos for you guys and stuff like that here, but, you know, gotta eat and stuff like that, and gotta work and things. Um, if I could do this full-time, I would, but I can't. So, um, thank you so much for watching, you guys. That's all I need you to do. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.